Welcome to Soul of an Empath, the podcast that helps empaths to feel loved, seen, heard, and understood in all areas of your life. Now here's your host, Tiffany Cano. Hello, it's Tiffany Cano again with Soul of an Empath. I'm so excited to continue with this week's episode with Sarah Walton. Sarah and I actually did a summit together. So this is my second time interviewing her. Last year, we did a summit um, called Waging Peace, Love, and Truth so that um, we could do a fundraiser for Marianne Williamson. And she's done a lot of training with Marianne and has worked with her. And so... Um, yeah, I'm excited to have her back on the show. So let me tell you a little bit about Sarah. She's a business mentor who has been featured in the Today Show, speaks at women's conferences all over the world, and has helped hundreds of women start and grow businesses they love. She's the creator of the Money Mindset course, an interactive course designed to transform your relationship to money. Her heart centered business bootcamp, an online program for aspiring entrepreneurs, and the Manifest Mastermind, a nine month personal and professional development experience. Sarah has become the go to source of inspiration, no nonsense teaching, and practical integration for women in business. She's created a successful business and now speaks across the nation. So thank you, Sarah, for coming today. <laughs> oh, Tiffany, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about this podcast for you. This is going to be amazing. Yay! You're so cool. <laughs> I wish we lived closer because you're, I don't know, like we, we just have a, a connection where I would want to hang out with you. <laughs> right back at you, sister. And listen, the second we can travel again, I'm going to come say hi. I have okay. a in LA, so I'll come over and say hi. Okay. <laughs> so talk to me about being an empath and what do you see as the underlying angst most people are facing right now, given everything that's changed in 2020? Yeah, that's a big question. Um, I think the biggest thing I've seen is the illusion of control has been removed. So we go through life with this totally made up idea that we have tomorrow, right? which isn't true, right? Any of us get hit by a bus tomorrow and that's not to be in a scary way, but that was always the case. And then you enter COVID and then you enter social unrest and then you bring in this crazy election, right? And people are looking going, but we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. It's like, the truth is you never did. And what this year is giving us the opportunity to see is we never did. But it's just like in your face right now, right? So it's like created this weird angst where the illusion of control has evaporated. It's been absolutely eviscerated. And what that's causing is a massive sense of fear and panic. Um, and everybody's manifesting that a little bit differently. Some people are out, like we know the toilet paper thing we all joked about months ago, but now you're looking at it in different ways of the fights over masks or the fights over the right way to do this or who knows the most. Instead of dealing with the exquisite discomfort that comes from understanding that at any moment, <laughs> everything we know and the way that we're used to things happening could stop. And now we're looking at that and questioning, what do I bring to that? Who do I want to be in the face of that? What do I need to reconcile in myself and in my relationships to be able to deal with that? What does that look like? On top of just the natural human fear of, oh my gosh, what's next? Oh my gosh, what happens? And understanding as we watch people pass or we watch the fear kind of roll over is remembering that fear's job is to come up, right? So I'm so sorry, I said that wrong. So love's job is to bring up fear so the fear can come up. And we cannot heal it if we do not see it. And that's why this stripping of the illusion of control is so important to our own evolution as a species. 
because the more that we inject love into that as empaths and as spiritual guides and as healers, right, the more that we inject love into it, the more the fear is going to come up. And I think we're seeing this on a colossal level. And I think as empaths and healers and spiritual guides, it can be scary for us too. Because it's like, whoa, yeah. this is too big. I've never seen it this big before. Can we handle this? I don't know what to do. And it's like, no, you do. Just because the scale got bigger <laughs> doesn't mean the actions you need to take to get there are any different. They're not. It's exactly the same steps. It is injecting the love. It's standing for what's true. It's constantly examining yourself to make sure you're not putting your own stuff in the way and that you're being there for other people with the gifts you've been given, not the gifts other people have given, not letting people yank your chain and telling you what you're supposed to be scared of next, but rather stepping back and going, all right, which pockets of fear can I transmute? Which pockets of fear can I have the biggest effect on? And how much love can I inject? Trusting that other healers, other empaths, other light workers are doing the same thing for the areas they feel called to meet. And if we can trust each other that there's usually only one call for each of us, sometimes two, that we feel most compelled to meet. Doesn't mean the others aren't important, but the ones that we feel most compelled to meet, we can go meet and then trust our fellow colleagues and, and light workers to meet the others. And if we can kind of come together and work on that together and trusting each other, I think this is going to go really well. It doesn't mean it's going to be smooth sailing. It doesn't mean like from here on out, it's perfect, but I think it'll go really well. But we have to be up for the game of not being afraid of our own fear. I hope I answered your question. I think fear has been definitely rampant, <laughs> you know, this year. It, it's been really intense for a lot of people. I mean, basic survival issues at play, plus, you know, our sense of safety. I mean, I had protests and riots within one to two miles of me that went on for like a month, <laughs> you know, <laughs> before yeah. they simmered down. Um, and I'm in California where the COVID numbers are extremely high right now, you yeah. know? And so there's just been a lot of funk yeah. out there. So for me, when I think of control, like that comes from, I think from a place of fear, like I want to control as this illusion that if I'm the one <laughs> who has this perceived yes. control, then I'm safe. But that doesn't yes. necessarily mean that that's true. Right. And it never did. And I think but we all have that, Tiffany. Like, it's like, oh, are you human? Yes, that is your thing. You think <laughs> you can control everything and then you'll be fine, right? Like, it's like, yes, welcome to humanity. This is what we do, right? And so sort of acknowledging our shared humanity that way and the generosity that comes with that and the spirit of love that can come with that of like, oh, did you want to control today too? Yeah, me too. It's like <laughs> that, if we can share that joke and be like, I know, I don't know what we're smoking because that was never real. And if we can share in that humanity <laughs> together, it can start to dissipate, but it's the, it's the hanging on to it that is so damaging, right? Like, oh, these riots need to stop. These COVID numbers need to go down. Yeah, do what you need to do for you. Absolutely. Like play your part to cause that to happen. Work on your anti-racism. Check in on yourself. Make sure you're playing your part. Make sure you're wearing your mask. You know, don't look flagpoles. It's usually a tip I give people. <laughs> Stay clean, people. Like, oh my gosh, don't be dumb, right? Do what you can do for you and then do what you're here to do. And that I think is the second piece of 2020 that so many people are missing. Do what you're here to do. Don't be dumb. But every day before, we had to brush our teeth. We had to have our coffee. We had to do our hair and our makeup. For those of us that do that, right? You had to put on clothes. You had to go to work or you had to go to meetings. You had to be with people. And all that's happened really is now you have to grab your mask. You have to grab your hand sanitizer. You have to grab your gloves if you need them. You have to make sure you're having difficult conversations with people. So if we actually look at what changed, it's not as significant on a day-to-day -day basis as it feels when it's coming at us, but it's actually just added to what there is for us to do to play our part in helping humanity evolve and grow and do what we're here to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think people who are healers and coaches and 
um, medical professionals, yeah. <laughs> for example, like we're working our booties off right now. Yeah. It's, it's been a case of overwhelm from overworking. And then there's the other part of humanity that wishes they could get a job. Yes. You yes. know, and so I know that, that money has been a big point of conversation yes. here in, in our country. Like, what do you, what do you think um, about money and its role that it plays, um, especially with, well, let's break it down, like yeah. in humanity, as well as how to empower women entrepreneurs who are, you know, part of your tribe. And yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so talk to me about the whole control and money theme. <laughs> oh, well, Tiffany, we could be here for about 19 hours if you okay. want. Okay. <laughs> I like there. you enough to do it. <laughs> yeah, so, so we'd like both be horse. And our voices would fall out, but we'd keep going. Um, <laughs> all right. So as you know, you know, you mentioned that you and I were in a summit together before, and we've had this conversation and, um, I'd love to share my concept of this with your audience. And it really came from my work with Marianne Williamson, but years and years ago, I was preparing a talk about money and it came to me, like, I'm sure you've had this experience, Tiffany, where you're like, oh, I think I'm losing my mind, but that voice was not mine. And it said money is love. And I was like, someone is high somewhere. I was like, what, where did that come from? And I was like, I don't want to be known as the money is love lady. I don't want, no, I don't want this. I don't want this. And it kept coming and it kept coming. And this is as I was preparing for a talk. And so I ended up writing it in. I was at this huge conference and I ended up writing it in and the whole thing just came out. And I've really, it's sort of, I don't, uh, it pointed me in a whole new direction for all of my life's work. It really informed my life's work. And the idea being that for those who are afraid, money probably isn't the answer you're looking for, though it looks like that's what the answer you're looking for. Mm -hmm. When you get scared around money, the first thing you want to do is look at what you need to heal in order to be able to earn the money. And that is because money is that same love-like energy, love being from the Course in Miracles that Love's job is to stoke fear, bring it up to the top so it can be healed and transmuted into love, and that that's all there is. And the way I view money and its circulation around this planet in this specific economy, in this specific country right now, and what's actually happening is it's showing us what needs to get healed. If you look at where the problems are around money, it's like what needs to get healed. We don't treat each other with respect when it comes to our physical bodies, so they're sick. That needs to get healed. We're learning about sex trafficking because we value money over children. That needs to get healed. We look at what we did to the Native Americans because we put profit over people and that's what this country was founded on and we're needing to heal that. We look at Black Lives Matter. This country was founded on murder and slavery and rape. We need to heal that. And what's happening <sighs> is you look at everything that's coming up, it is all a massive cry for healing. And that's not to make it all okay. I'm like, oh, let's kumbaya, let's heal it. That's, no, I'm talking deep, hard work, like the conversations we were talking about people need to have on a daily basis to heal this. And that means we got to tell the truth. So if you are someone listening to this and you're like, oh my dear God, I need to just earn money. I need to just earn money. Before you try running after the next available job that you're going to hate, that isn't going to serve anybody and it's not going to grow you and cause you to be the best that you can be on this planet, ask yourself first, what do I need to heal? And it could be that you need to have a complicated conversation with your spouse or someone you were, maybe you found inside of white privilege, a time you were racist and didn't realize it. Go clean it up. I'm not kidding. Go clean it up. Clean up any money situations from when you were a child. If there's someone you need to call out as far as truth for yourself and go, listen, I allowed you to abuse me or I allowed myself to remain a victim. It's time for me to heal that. Go clean it up. And I got to tell you, if each one of us, specifically those who are worried about money, which is just a massive circulation of love energy, that is all it is. We just decided to call it dollar bills right now. We might decide it's hearts. We might want to pass around paper hearts in three years. I don't know. Right now we circulate it in the realm of money, but that's all it is. And you can't have access to it if you haven't healed what there is for you to heal so you can hold that energy. 
And it's literally like, it's like a law of science almost. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's not woo woo. It's not crazy. Watch, go try it. Like, it's not going to cost you anything to go clean up some messes and watch a call come in, watch an interview come in, watch a new industry get created, watch a new product idea come. Just watch it happen. And it doesn't cost anything for you to start to try to heal. I hope I answered your question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you went right, right to the guts, you know, yeah. on, on this. And I think it's important. We've been brushing these big things under the rug for far too long. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the masses were like, all right, it's time to heal it. <laughs> and, and it's just been a little challenging because it's been one thing after the next, after the next, after the next, like every month this year has been like a new big thing. Yes. And yeah. so it, it takes a ton of resiliency to be able to handle this amount, especially as empaths who feel everything. Yes. Um, oh, yes. But I, I, I really think that what you said is so important that love drives up these fears and things that we need to heal so that yes. we can, you know, together grow as a society, grow as humanity. Um, I've been doing healings for racism and community discussions on the topic because, you know, I think the Black Lives Matter movement is important. And... Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's critical to our healing because we built the country on a lie and we can't mm -hmm. move forward until we deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many big social things happening right now. And thank you for just going right to the guts of it. Because that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, Tiffany, I think what you just said was really important. Um, and that it feels so overwhelming and it feels so big, right? It's like, oh my God, another one and another one. And just for those of us that are empaths and like, I mean, I don't know how you've been experiencing it too, but I'll wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh crap, what just happened? Because it's like, oh no, another thing just happened. I can feel it coming. And it's like, okay, just remember, look at what you need to heal where you're not seeing peace, be peaceful, where you're not seeing love, go love. And just, it literally comes down to that again and again and again. And if we've been able to do it for small things, small meaning a moment in our lives or other times mm -hmm. five years ago, we can do it now. And the only reason these things are this big is because we can handle it. If we couldn't, it wouldn't be happening. And I really believe that. That's hard to wrap our heads around, especially as empaths. And we're like, please, can we get a break here? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I like all my family who's medical workers are like, seriously, just, can you just stop moving people? Like we wouldn't be given it if we couldn't do it. Yes. God only gives us what we can handle is yeah. my belief. And so I, I think that that's true. We all just need to put on our big girl panties <laughs> and get to work yeah. you know, and yes. heal those deeper things. So what do you think are some of the biggest mistakes or missteps that women in particular are making as they begin and grow their business? They apologize for everything. I, I just am so silly for me to say it that blatantly. I didn't think it was going to come out like that, but <laughs> it really is true. <clears throat> it really is this idea that, oh, I'm so sorry. I have the audacity to do this. I know I'm just cute. I know it's just a sweet idea. I'm just a healer. Like that, that, I don't know. I, I don't know why we continue to perpetuate that about ourselves, but we do. So I think that level of apology and, and what comes with that, right, is something that hasn't been healed, which is our own understanding of the contribution our gifts, talents, and experience and expertise provides the world. And as a business owner, you must understand that the amount of love that you pour out into the world has to be matched by the, by the amount of love that's in your bank account. And if that is not congruent, you will feel off. And by congruent, I mean, if you're gouging people and you're making way too much and you know you're scamming people, you will lose all of it. 
because it's not congruent. Also, if you're giving away everything and it feels like crap because you feel like people are taking advantage of you and you're apologizing for being alive and breathing and, oh, it's okay, don't pay me. You're doing that. You're going to feel horrible. You might get sick. You're going to feel bad and your business is going to die. Mm -hmm. So what needs to get healed there for women, the biggest mistake is they think they can jump in without looking at, yes, their relationship to money, but also their relationship to their own self-worth and understanding the ripple effects of what happens out there in the world when they listen to what they're called to do. Mm. That, that's really powerful stuff. When you said um, those excuses early on, yeah, I, I was just seeing like the diminishment of power, the shrinking and collapsing, the auras getting like gray and shriveled. And all of that is because of some wound that has not yet been healed. Because if we were truly healed, we'd be standing in our power. Yep. We'd be expressing ourselves fully and flying our, you know, freak flag and our <laughs> uniqueness and basking in it. And I, I mean, it, it's such an important thing because people need us to do that. I think yeah. as women, we won't always do things for ourselves, but we'll do it if it impacts and contributes to somebody else. Yes. <laughs> Mothers, I'm talking to you. <laughs> So, um, you know, for, for me, I, I've been in a habit of spiritual growth and development and, and going in and healing those shadows. Like that is fun for me. I've been doing that for decades now, but I know not everybody likes it because it can feel scary and that this unknown thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, to me, like, and, and, you know, let me know your thoughts on this, but if I just come from the questions, what would love say, what would love do mm. that just fixes it right then yeah. and there. Like it, it dissipates all the fear that I could have ever had about that scenario or situation. Gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of a better question. Honestly, that is just exquisite. Just my response to that is yes. The end. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. And there, I mean, just think though too, Tiffany, I mean, we're being funny, but like if we were to look at in the world and actually have people ask that question, what would be possible? I mean, really. Peace on earth, man. Yeah. I mean, really, we're talking from politicians down to the interaction you had at the grocery store yesterday. Like what would be possible and what would this world look like? It's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Th those are my golden questions. Anytime mm -hmm. I'm feeling fearful or wanting to control something, what would love say? Mm -hmm. What would love do? And obviously we need to drop down into our hearts to find it. <laughs> yeah. You know, this isn't yeah. a question, uh, an answer that we'll find looking in our head. No, or watching the news. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Beautiful, Tiffany. I totally agree with you on that. That's gorgeous. Yeah. So thank you for all that you've shared about that. Um, what do you think would be a great way to give up control? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I know you, you do some teaching about it, which we've brought, touched on so far, and you even have a gift that's connected to it. So can you talk to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, everybody wants control. We just joked about that, right? And, and in facing 2020 and in recognizing the depth of our humanity around this and our deep-seated desire to control everything, which by the way, total side plug here. If you guys have not heard Mel Robbins' audible book, Take Control of Your Life, oh, all the golden nuggets are right in there, where she actually coaches five separate people through the idea that they're in control and what they put into place to keep the control. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. And watching this experience of our fellow humans go through it with her is just gorgeous. Um, and the idea with control that I've always taught is that yes, it's an illusion. And actually, it's such a paradox because the only way to control 
is to tell the truth. Hmm. And not to tell the truth in the way of, F you, you're a big jerk, I hate your gut. No, no, that's not telling the truth. That's airing anger and not in a healthy way, as opposed to when you do that, I feel this way. Why are you mm-hmm. overreacting? That might be so. When you do that, I feel this way. Wow, you're this and that. I got that that's how you feel. When you do that, I feel this way. And for women especially, that is a very challenging concept because we are women who are being raised in this patriarchal society that doesn't work for us. Right? It's really challenging. And the way we've tried to control things, for a lot of women, it's food. Others, it's exercise. Others, it's sex. Others, it's money. Others, it's passive aggressive, you know, walk by their husband in the hallway, you know, those kind of crazy conversations we have where we're not talking at all. Those are all ways that we've tried in the past to gain control. And the only true access to control is the truth, your truth. And when we share the truth, like our nation was founded on murder, and we don't talk about that, that's just a truth. And when we start to tell the truth, the desire to control and hide and fix and twist goes away because you don't need it because there's nothing to hide or control or fix. And it's a very challenging thing for us because we believe it to be the opposite. We tried it out as kids. For some of us, if you cried really hard when you didn't want to do something, Magically, you didn't have to do it anymore because mommy would fix it. Oh my God, I'm going to cry all the time. This is the best thing ever. And then you are this beautiful adult woman about to give a huge talk in front of 10,000 people and you burst into tears backstage hoping someone's going to come and rescue you. And that's you trying to control that situation when the truth is, holy crap, I'm so nervous. Here I go. That's the truth. But we learn these little tricky habits when we're younger and we think they work. Because when we were younger, they did. But as adults, especially as women, and I think one of the transformations we're witnessing inside of 2020 is the transformation of this patriarchal society back into a balanced society where the beauty and grace and dignity and wisdom that live inside of women's bodies and live inside of women's intuition and live inside of the female experience are actually starting to be expressed and valued not just expressed and tolerated, but expressed and valued. And I think we're going to see that start to come through too. And if we, as the women specifically, or light healers, I know some of the men really can kind of feel that same way because they'll pull more towards that feminine instinct or wisdom. They, they feel persecuted as well inside the patriarchal society. And it also hurts the macho men too. But as we start to feel that and see that and watch that and grant the grace around that, the need to control will start to lift. Because that need to control is very, very masculine as part of the toxic masculinity that has driven our society for so long. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to take a breath and, and meditate on what you just said. <laughs> you take as long as you need, Devin. <laughs> if anybody's listening and you're driving, that's cool, but just don't close your eyes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I feel like we always have to put that in, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. Safety first. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. I, I mean, you've really given me some stuff to inhale and chew on. Oh, good. Good. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I feel like as you were saying these truths, it, it really was sloughing away the gray clouds of ignorance and delusion and lies and, um, and the way that we've manipulated, you know, like as a society. So thank you. I, I, I would love to hear this on, you know, a loud speaker <laughs> across the America. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do it. I don't know how, but let's do it. Well, we're going to start right here now with this podcast and get it out there into the world. <laughs> okay, so everybody who you think could benefit from hearing this, please share. <laughs> Not only share this podcast, but please also like and and rate it. <laughs> and yes, please make a review. <laughs> yes. you know what? Uh, 
Tiffany, I have to jump in on that too. I'm going to just echo what you just said. My people who are listening, podcasts are a labor of love. So make sure you re reward that love back to Tiffany with a rating, with a star review. Let her know that you love her back for everything she's pouring mm. into this because it's pretty beautiful. Aww. I'm feeling the love. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for love. Take that beer. Eat it up. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> and, then, and, then, and, then, and then we just love it all up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the little Care Bear heart. Was it that the best Care Bear? That was the best. Oh my Care gosh! Bear. I love that. Loves, when they had the loves come out when they were all together. Always. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, but I, I I imagine us sending this Care Bear love. Out Care Bear love. Well, maybe that's the name of the episode. No, I'm just kidding. Care uh -huh. Bear love. Anyhow. Oh goodness! They'd probably have to be our age to know it. <laughs> Right about that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this has been really fun. Thank you so much, Sarah. Talk to me about your gift specifically and, and how people can get it. And by the way, I'll put the URL in the show notes for everyone. So awesome. Yeah. So, all right, you guys. So if you're hearing this, I truly believe there's a reason. I always believe that. I always say that anytime I'm a guest or an on my own podcast, like if this is the one you flip to, it's because this is the one you needed to hear the most. And what goes on with that and or what's a companion to that is the way I run my business is when I hear something or something happens, I just act on it, much like the money is love situation. And when COVID hit, I had just spent the weekend with Oprah, which was life-changing. Literally, I saw her on March 7th and the world shut down on March 10th. Thank God we had those three days. And I had started all these plans for my business and I was going to do all these things. And then COVID hit and I'm sitting there with all these visions and all these plans I'd have of being around all these people and being everywhere. And it was gone. <laughs> and I was like, wait, uh -oh. what just happened? And I'm sitting there myself. And I had just had a one-on-one -on -one call with a client and she was at the moment in my one-on-one -on -one trainings that I do for six months with my one-on-one -on -one clients. We have a week specifically about the illusion of control. Mm -hmm. And I knew in that moment I had to release that specific week and the content that goes with that week that I only have always ever reserved for my one-on-one -on -one clients. It was like, no, the world needs this now. So I released it. I now give it for free. You can go to sarahwalton.com slash control. And you can download that worksheet and do it for yourself. And what it will do is help you remember what you already are in control of, but it will also help you release this crazy illusion that you ever had control anyway over anything other than speaking the truth. But you need to kind of go through that for yourself and understand it. And the other thing that's in that gift is it really kind of helps you see what levers you can pull when you feel out of control, if as an empath, you're like, oh my God, I can't take another day. This is just too much for me. Like my heart's going to explode. Go back and rework it again, specifically for that moment. And it's amazing. Every single time people work through this worksheet, they go through it with a different lack of control that they're feeling. And by the end of it, they're like, oh, I got it now. Okay. Woo, I'm back. And so that's the gift that I have for everybody today. Hmm. I love it. Thank you. I can't wait to do the worksheet. <laughs> You're so as, welcome. As, as you were saying it, the Janet Jackson control song was going through my oh, head. Like I was hearing it. <laughs> In the ethers. Control. And now I got a lot. <laughs> and the aging continues. Yes. You have labeled us forever as children of the 80s. That's cool. Sorry. Yeah, that the best song ever though i think i might have to listen to that on my way home today i think i'm gonna in the car really loud when no one can <laughs> we have fun on this show what can i say i love it i love we it we can well, go to the depths and touch on these you know deep shadowy things and also have fun and play and laugh what else and it's needed for? you know I mean, and and love through it all yes Yes, because there really isn't anything else that life is for. We're here to love each other. We're here to laugh. We're here to enjoy. And it doesn't mean that the other stuff isn't still happening. It is. And when we have the time, energy, joy, and love to be able to participate in it, we do and we will. Mm -hmm. um, one, one quick thing before we close up shop. 
Yeah. You had mentioned you had spent a few days with Oprah. Can you give us a little, uh, you know, insider (laughs) (laughs) info on that? Who's that? Oh my gosh. No, she smells so good. Um, and I still haven't washed the shirt I wore when I hugged her though. I probably should at this point. And, uh, those are like the fun, silly things that people want to know, but there is, this happened to, I met Brenda Bouchard and I had the same experience where there are some people on this planet who are so present that it can almost knock you backwards when you're in their physical presence. And you can see the charisma and you can see the power over video. You can see it in recording. You can see it when she's been in movies. Absolutely. You can see it when she's on stage. But to hold her hands or to hug her or to look her, to look her in the eyes, it literally Mm. took my breath away. And she said something really great to all of us. She said, look, we're going to get times to have our pictures taken together and we're going to be together. And she's like, that's great. You can throw it up on social and that I'm not interested. She said, I want you to remember what this moment means to you. Mm. And then she took time with us and sat down with us and talked to us about where life was for us and what we wanted and what we were seeing. And that's where all my inspiration came from too, was like, I want to tour with her. I want to be on stage with her. I want to talk to women about money. I want to talk about this illusion of control. I want to talk about being feminine in a patriarchal society. I'm ready. And that's, I shared that with her. I was like, you've inspired me to be who I am supposed to be. And that means I've got to get as healthy as I can get. And I've got to be as strong as I can get. And I have to make sure my kids are okay. And I shared that with her. And she said, this picture that we're about to take, and you can see it on my Facebook page, we're dancing actually, because how could I not dance? But that picture, that's what that means to me, is I have, I've been given this voice for a reason. And anytime I choose to put my own fears or my own insecurities or my own I'm too busies or, oh my God, the world is on fire, all those things that we put in front of why we were created serve nothing but the ego system, which we were all born into. And it's really time to release that. And so I'll say in meeting her, yes, she smells good and she's lovely. And she's just, you just want to live with her immediately. Is that also, she's so present. Mm -hmm. And there is a power in that. I talk about true charisma, like those people who walk into a room and shift molecules. Yeah. If you've been in the presence, you know, like, you can like, and it's because someone came in behind you, right? Yeah. That kind of a feeling where it's like, oh my God, who just came in the room? Those people are exquisitely present, meaning they have no agenda. They're not there in order to get something for you, from you. And they're not even necessarily there to give you something. They're there to be. And when you are in the presence of somebody like that, it is to be reminded of who you are. So that's what it was like to be with her. Wow. I'm very happy that I had that right before we all went into quarantine. And I'm on the East Coast where it got really bad really fast. We were the ones who were like on DEFCON 5 immediately when the country shut down because we had so many cases. And so I empathize with what you're going through. So to go through that for me personally as a human, from that moment to immediate fear shut down, don't move was like, wait, wait, what? That doesn't work. And so really kind of working through that and experiencing that, I I think it deepened my ability to be an empath as people walk through 2020 and watch the rug consistently get pulled out. It's like, yeah, what are you going to do about that? Who do you want to be in the face of that? And having the empathy for people as we navigate this together. Mm. Yeah. Love it. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I am so happy that I invited you to be a guest. (laughs) You too. You too. I love being with you. It's always wonderful. Always. Oh, thank you very much for being with us today. And everyone go pick up her worksheet on control. The link will be in the show notes please connect with Sarah because she's amazing, as you can tell just from this, you know, half hour episode, maybe a little longer than a half hour because we played, (laughs) but (laughs) you know, it is what it is. I just had to go with the flow. (laughs) All right. I love you, Sarah. I love you all. Namaste. Love you Check back Thank next you. week <laughs> after you've reviewed. <laughs> <laughs>
I've shared. <laughs> five stars, people. Five stars. Five stars. stars. <laughs> That's you. right. Thank you. Bye for now. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Soul of an Empath with Tiffany Cano. If you enjoyed this show, please rate and recommend it on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you are listening to it. You can get more information from soulofanempath.com. May you be blessed with love, health, peace, joy, spiritual oneness, prosperity, and abundance. So be it. So be it. So be it.